Hi everyone, my name is Bossy and I'm a PhD student at University of Southern California. Today I'll be talking about our work on auditing for discrimination in algorithms delivering job ads. This is a joint work with my PhD advisors, uh, Professor Alexander Korolova and Professor John Heidemann. Target advertisement has become ubiquitous in recent years, and it's one of the main ways people learn about opportunities such as employment, education, credit, and housing. Therefore, externally auditing app platforms and the role that their ad delivery algorithms play in shaping society is important, both to ensure that they're delivering ads in a fair way, and also to ensure that they're complying with uh, applicable laws for such domains. Uh, to see why, let's start with an example. Let's say I'm a tech company and I would like to advertise a software engineering job position. Uh, so I create this ad and um, to avoid discrimination, I create a gender balanced ad audience with 50% females and 50% males. And I run my ad on Facebook's ad platform. The outcome I get is that more females see the ad, even though I targeted a gender balanced ad audience. Now the question is, why is there such skew? And, and who is responsible for this outcome. Prior work by uh, Ali and Sapiazinski et al. precisely looked at this research question and studied jobs that are stereotypically associated with a certain demographics and uh, studied why uh, they see a, a skewed ad delivery. Uh, in that prior work, they look at different potential sources of skew. The first one is the advertiser's targeting parameters. They control for this by targeting a gender balanced ad audience. Uh, and second, uh, they look at confounding factors such as market effects, uh, for example, other ads bidding higher for men versus women, or uh, people's availability uh, during the time the ads are running. In their methodology, they control for uh, these factors, and instead, what they show is that. Uh, the skew that they observe is due to ad delivery optimization by the platform's algorithms. The platform optimized for uh, goals such as relevance and engagement or uh, revenue. And uh, in their work, they show that uh, such hidden optimizations can result in skewed uh, ad delivery, even though the advertiser uh, targeted a balanced audience. What this prior work does not, did not consider as a potential source of skew is uh, potential differences in qualification in the targeted audience. To see why this is a relevant uh, factor in the context of job ads, uh, going back to the example, uh, we can see that even though the uh, advertiser targeted a gender balanced audience, if we take into account how many of uh, those people are actually qualified for the job being advertised, and use that to interpret the outcome that we get, uh, we can see that uh, the skew can be explained by differences in qualification. So in this case, more females see the ad because there are more fraction of females uh, qualified in the audience. So in our work, uh, first we discussed that qualification is an excusable source of skew uh, in US anti-discrimination law. Uh, specifically in Title VII, uh, employers and advertisers can use bona fide occupational qualifications as a legal defense against claims of anti uh, uh, claims of discrimination. So in our work, we argue that uh, uh, in order to claim that uh, audit findings that show skew are indeed discrimination, uh, one must control for uh, differences in qualification. Otherwise, uh, our platforms uh, can use qualification to justify the audits findings. Even though we focus on uh, employment uh, in our work, our bigger uh, hope and vision is that the more uh, auditing methodologies are uh, better aligned with the law, the, the more useful they can be in enforcing anti-discrimination law in practice. Based on this key insight, our uh, contributions are first to give a new method for auditing for discrimination in delivery of job ads. Uh, our method is the first to account for differences in qualification. Uh, much like prior work, we also still control for other confounding factors. So 
so that we can measure discrimination that's being induced by the platform and not by the advertiser's targeting choices. Second, we apply this new methodology on two prominent ad platforms, LinkedIn and Facebook, and uh, we find results that show discriminatory ad delivery by gender on Facebook, uh, whereas we find no such evidence uh, on LinkedIn, LinkedIn's ad platform. Um, so the crux of our methodology is how we account for qualification. So I'll be focusing on that in this talk, but uh, more details are in the paper. So the challenge with accounting for qualifications is that uh, as external auditors, uh, we don't have access to user profile data uh, that would let us directly control for uh, qualification in our audience. So instead we rely on an indirect approach. So what we do is uh, we find a pair of job positions uh, with two criteria. First one is uh, they need to have similar qualification requirements. Uh, I'll explain why in a bit. And second, uh, there needs to be data that shows that the de fact, there is a de facto gender skew in the real world for this job positions. Uh, to explain that with an example, if we take delivery driver job at Domino's versus Instacart, uh, both jobs have very similar qualification requirements, uh, but, but there's data that shows that uh, Domino's ad, uh, they're larger than 98% of uh, Domino's drivers are male, whereas a majority of Instacart drivers are uh, female. Uh, so uh, we find such job positions and uh, run ads for them. And, uh, and we run both ads at the same time, targeting the same audience. And we also uh, target in a gender balanced way. And we look at the relative difference uh, in the outcome. So if there is relative difference in how these ads are delivered by gender, uh, uh, we hypothesize that uh, the ad delivery algorithm is propagating the existing skew in the real world because we ruled out qualification as a potential source of skew. So in this example, we would expect uh, the Instacart ad to be shown to more fraction of females if uh, indeed the algorithm is perpetuating uh, the existing skew. Uh, in order to ensure uh, the relative difference that we see is statistically significant, uh, we take the fraction of females that saw each ad and uh, we apply a standard uh, to sample Z test uh, uh, for difference in proportion. And we test our hypothesis at 95% confidence level. And uh, we conclude that there is a statistically significant skew if uh, the Z score exceeds the critical value. We take our methodology and uh, uh, study the following research questions. The first one is uh, we test whether ad platforms delivery algorithms perpetuate uh, de facto skew in the jobs that we study. Uh, we uh, uh, test our methodology on multiple job categories and also reproduce our results on multiple audiences. Um, second, we test whether our methodology applies across different platforms by uh, running ads on both Facebook and LinkedIn and showing contrasting results. The first job category that we looked at is uh, delivery driver. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the de facto skew in this case is that uh, Instacart has higher percentage of uh, female delivery drivers than Domino's. And we would expect to be this to be reflected in, in how the ads are delivered. So this figure shows our first result for uh, this job category. Uh, the x-axis is the fraction of females a given ad was shown to and the y-axis shows uh, the outcomes for each of the two platforms we studied, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, we run the same pair of uh, ads on both platforms. And uh, on the right-hand side, uh, th there is the z-score uh, for each pair of ads and whether we see a statistically significant evidence for skew or not. So if we look at the top row for Facebook, we can see that the Instacart ad is shown to more fraction of females uh, than uh, the Domino's ad, which is uh, consistent with the direction of the de facto skew. Uh, on the other hand, 
if we look at the LinkedIn case, uh, we see that there's no uh, statistically significant uh, difference uh, between the Instacart and uh, Domino, Domino's ads that we ran on LinkedIn. This result shows just one round of our experiment. Uh, to gain more confidence in our results, we ran this same set of ads targeting different audiences. And this uh, figure shows the result of that. Uh, in here, the x-axis is the same, but the y-axis now has multiple trials that we ran targeting different audiences. So the top three are for uh, Facebook and the bottom three are for LinkedIn, each one targeting a different audience. Uh, if we look at the top three uh, trials, uh, we can see that uh, all of them show evidence of skew. And overall, what our findings show is that because our methodology controls for uh, differences in qualification, this skew that we see is not just skew, but also discriminatory in the legal sense. And that the role uh, Facebook's algorithms are playing might be contributing to a discriminatory outcome. On the other hand, if we look at the bottom three uh, cases, uh, we find no uh, evidence of discrimination on LinkedIn, which is uh, a negative result for uh, our experiments, but a uh, positive outcome for uh, society. We also find similar results for uh, other job categories that we studied. Uh, we looked at a software engineer uh, job position which is a high-skilled job that might be a better fit uh, for the platforms we study, such as LinkedIn. Uh, we also looked at sales associate job position, which is a popular job in the audience uh, we studied. Uh, so in both uh, this additional job categories, we find similar results that show evidence of discrimination in uh, Facebook's ad delivery, but not uh, in LinkedIn's case. Next, we looked at uh, whether uh, the skew that we see in, on Facebook is uh, due to uh, Facebook's algorithms merely optimizing for click-through rates, uh, which might be something uh, an advertiser wants. Um, so Facebook offers different campaign objective options uh, to advertisers. Uh, for example, uh, an advertiser can choose conversion objective, which optimizes to show uh, ads to people who are more likely to click and convert and like take us or an action on the linked site. Uh, on the other hand, uh, an advertiser can also choose a reach objective to which optimizes to show ads to as many people as possible in the targeted audience. So we took this to objectives and tested whether uh, an advertiser who wishes to reach a wider audience, uh, for example, in an effort to increase the diversity of their workforce, um, whether they can use the reach objective uh, to achieve that goal. Uh, so this figure shows the results from running a pair of software engineering ads, uh, one, one time with reach objective and the other time with conversion, and we contrast the results. Uh, if you look at the top row for uh, reach ads, uh, we can see that there's evidence of skew. And uh, what this result shows is that uh, Facebook's algorithms uh, skew ad delivery even if an advertiser uh, specifies a reach goal uh, to reach a wider audience. And uh, this shows that uh, even if an advertiser may not care as much about click-through rates, uh, the role that uh, Facebook's algorithms are playing is resulting in a discriminatory outcome. In conclusion, uh, our findings show that uh, the role that ad delivery algorithms play uh, may contribute to a discriminatory outcome. And as a result, we call for ad platforms to be more transparent about the algorithms that they use, uh, especially in contexts such as employment, where the stakes are high and that uh, they shape access to uh, such opportunities. Um, and second, we hope our new method uh, that controls for qualification can be used by regulators and researchers to audit ad platforms and also uh, do a more nuanced assessment of uh, legal liability in the employment context. Uh, so with that, I'll conclude my presentation. Uh, our paper and uh, the data set from our experiments can be found at the URL uh, shown in this slide. Uh, thank you for listening.